With over 1,700 titles released for the Amstrad CPC since 1984, there is bound to be several games floating around in the ether that are total crap in every way. Not to bash the system that I love of course, I thought it would be fun to have a look at some of the worst games on the platform. A combination of reviews, fan surveys and my personal opinion have created this list. So along with a few YouTube friends, let's take a look at the top 11 terrible Amstrad CPC games. Starting the list at number 11 is BMX Ninja. This was released by Alternative Software in 1989 and what a shocker it is. It does have some interesting things about it though. It does have an interesting split screen graphic mode where it mixes mode 0 and mode 1 together. There are 6 locations you can uh, choose from, backgrounds as it were, uh, 8 stages I believe and uh, a very saucy picture of your girlfriend who strips off down to her undies when you beat one of the gangs in turn. It is as dull as ditch water. The gameplay is shockingly empty, hollow. Um, it just has no replayability at all. It's ridiculously difficult because it's not only so slow and monotonous, it's just when you get to, an, you have to beat each individual um, opponent consecutively eight times to move on to the next stage. The moment you lose, you reset to zero again. Unbelievably slow, unbelievably boring, minimal sound effects, shoddy graphics, even implementing that interesting uh, double mode on the screen. Um, CPC game reviews give this a lowly two out of uh, 10. But str strangely enough, uh, Amstar Magazine back here, Amstar, Ma but strangely enough, Amstar, but strangely enough, the French Amstar magazine gave this a 14 out of 20 back in the day. Incredible, I don't know what they were thinking of. But let's see what my Amstrad aficionados think of this. <laughs> the infamous uh, BMX Ninja. I actually remember picking this one up at, for some reason, the boot fair. There was, uh, there, there was a time when boot fairs would just, people would go along with these crazy um, cases of just old cassettes. You know, half of them would be actually just copied cassettes. Uh, but no, no, I picked this one up. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's not a great game, and obviously the classic Ashens review probably does more justice to it than anybody. But um, uh, again, it was another review that I remember when I was younger actually being good. And I, I actually remember putting this one in quite a lot because I, I think the graphics were just, you know, for all of the game's, you know, uh, faults, the graphics looked like what they were supposed to look like. I mean, there was no ninjas involved. It's just the BMX are just slowly turning back and forth. Um, but uh, yeah, it again it absolutely sucks but i mean i tried this one out a couple of months ago um well maybe a year ago now and uh just for the shits and giggles of it really it's infamously bad and um it deserves that reputation it's not a good game <laughs> can't really tell exactly what i'm supposed to be doing um why this is, why this is a terrible game um well it's very slow can't really understand exactly what you're doing. Um, you're doing a several moves or whatever, trying to take out the other guy um, by slowly sort of jumping up and swirling around your bike. There's not really much to it. It's quiet. No music like you know, it's there. The odd sound effect when you take out your comp your uh, opponent. Um, you know, it's just very confusing, you know, you wonder why they bothered. Um, there are some nice bits, I must admit. The fact that they've gone to the effort of um, switching to mode zero to do the top, making it a little bit more colourful. But at the end of the day, all you're left with is a specky port of um, oh, a... specky port of a... Um, well, not a very good game. Okay, I'm pretty sure with BMX Ninja there is an actual idea of a game in this one. It's not as bad as some of the others that I've had a look at, and I think with a bit of practice you might be able to find something enjoyable to it. There's, there seems to be some level of skill. It's, uh, it's an oddity. I'm not sure there's any actual ninjas in it. I think that's just 
there because ninjas were cool at the time. And in the same way that we have zombies on everything now. And I think it, in terms of what it does, it's an interesting idea. It's not the best game ever. It's a little too slow. And the graphical quality, it's not quite there. But the idea of a, some sort of combat thing on bikes, yeah, I can get behind that. That might be okay if it's done a bit better, but it's not. The problem is it's too slow. The sound effects are blip beep That's about it. And uh, there's no music. So presentation-wise, there's just no polish here. And if it was polished up a bit, moved a bit faster, then maybe it would be something interesting to give a try. But as it is, there's nothing here. It's like they had an idea and they decided not to bother fulfilling it, basically. So that's what we got instead, a Spectrum port, which is a pile of crap. Next up on our list is Altered Beast, the seminal Sega classic that basically made the Mega Drive famous, originally from the arcades in 1988. It was brought to the Amstrad via Activision in 1989, and it was a brave attempt. It was a very brave attempt. Graphically, it's not too bad at all, but unfortunately, the problem with the Amstrad strikes again the scrolling and the movement and the general cohesiveness of the gameplay lets the whole thing down. Um, we've got a nice soundtrack, I guess. I mean, nice enough. It's a bit grating and a bit slapdash here and there, but it's a rendition of the arcade Mega Drive soundtrack. I say we've got some nice uh, polish intro graphics there, and the graphics in game aren't too bad at all. They do represent the arcade pretty well, albeit not very defined, very poor animation. The frame rate is absolutely shocking. So sound effects hit and miss, but you just cannot go over this utterly abysmal scrolling. It's it's game breaking. It's utterly game breaking. The slowness, the sluggishness of it, the lack. Of responsiveness from the controls it's just it becomes impossible almost so frustrating to play and therefore makes it just a terrible terrible game let's see what my friends have to say about the altered beast welcome to your Amstrad CPC doom watchers altered beast is a very processor intensive affair you get the flip disc message after pressing fire just once. Does the title screen take up a whole side of the tape? Or did they just feel like adding an extra layer of interactivity? So it seems the player is actually doing something to progress the game. The title screen is very pointillistic, I have to say. It's a sad fact, but... I'm fast finding that these Amstrad title screens often far outshine the game itself. But that's more than can be said for the in-game graphics. The dogs look more like bulls. Or... Wait... Are they yaks? Am I killing yaks here? I'd better not be. I'd like to say I admire what they're trying to do here, but it's like they got this idea to port Altered Beast to the Amstrad, and ran with it at all costs, crippling lag or no. Here's a question. If I overclock my CPC, will that make the game run faster before I trip the entire street's fuse box? The game is so slow, it's like playing on a typewriter. But I can put up with that, because the graphics are wonderful. <laughs> yeah, right. Enemies take just as long to die as they might in real life, and thus, this is a highly realistic game. As I speak, this is 2016, the age of the simulation, and Amstrad CPC Altered Beast was doing this 30 years ago. It truly is a game ahead of its time. Oh. Not again. Let me use the toilet while I wait for the next screen to load. Oh, forget it. I'll switch off the Amstrad and do some flower arranging instead. Okay, Altered Beast, can we really be sure it's a game? And not a punishment for something we did in a past life? I'm 
pretty sure that the reason that it's going so slow is that the Amstrad is actually rendering it under protest. As if, oh, you really, really want to play this game? Well, have another frame and see if you still like it. Are you sure you want to keep going? Are you really, really sure? All right, well, have another frame, but it's on you. This isn't my fault. And I, I think that's how it's gone because this game is so, so bad. Oh my goodness. It, it's not so much Altered Beast as Total Trash. Yeah. Alliteration, that's how bad it's got. If this game had an ass, I would kick it. Altered Beast, going on in the back there. Not a specky ball. It's not too bad. Um, graphics, well, hmm. when you get in the game, they're pretty awful, really. There's been a lot much better um, Mode Zero games. And you've got input lag. Terrible, terrible scrolling. And, um, well, stupid bosses. Let's face it, and this one pops it off, tries to get you. It's all part of the game, anyway. Um, it's extremely difficult. Well, yeah, what else can you say? I struggled. I struggled a lot. Um, even just to get back into it. I know when I had it originally, I got quite far. But, um, yeah. Very difficult. Purely just to get around the input lag is enough. Um, controls are difficult. It just snowballs into a, well, a terrible game. Coming in at number 9 and surprisingly low is LA SWAT by Mastertronic in 1987. Los Angeles SWAT sometimes known as. And this game, well there's a reason why I've p positioned it in where it is at number 9. I mean, on the face of it, it's extremely basic looking, terrible controls, collision detection is pretty bad. But there is the essence of a decent game here. There is something about it which it could have been, could have been a decent game. It's just implemented with no finesse, no detail, terrible. Um, but because it does have the inkling of a good game in there, there is something hiding away. <laughs> um, I can give it, I'll, I'll put it in ninth position for this one. Uh, apart from the fact that we have, um, well, exploding heads of the uh, rioters, it seems. So we're uh, armed to the teeth uh, cop with my two compadres. They're my extra lives there walking alongside me. And we're walking down the street to uh, dispatch the rioters. And when we do, we, we appear to be uh, firing um, compressed air pellets, sort of ones that were uh, that uh, Dr. Kananga suffered an untimely death to in James Bond. Um, so when we shoot these guys, their heads basically explode, as you can see. And when we get caught, you'll also see, there we go. And when we get caught by them, they batter us to death in a gory puddle of goo. Lovely. Really nice. <coughs> oh, dear. So it's uh, yeah, a little bit on the tasteless side and a little bit on the boring side too. There is uh, actually really nothing to this game. It's walk up a street, uh, shooting people, get to the end. There's a big gang at the end, shoot them and that's it. Rinse, repeat, ad nauseum. It's really all you've got left in the game. Um, there are graphical glitches numerous times. You can see look, there's floating bullets all over the place there. I think that's supposed to be sniper fire. I'm probably certain on that. Um, but does, it doesn't hit you anyway. This guy seems to have a half, half expanded head here. This score. Yeah, it's like a, like a badly translated um, port, that, isn't it? Yes, this game is pretty bad. The colours are garish. Uh, it's so slow to control. So slow to... Uh, no, not a single sound. Not a single sound. This is a quiet game. That guy was spinning around. Did you see him? He came doing his Michael Jackson when he was coming in there. But like I said, this game does have something to it. There is a game there hiding underneath. It's It's got this touch of Akari Warriors about it. A little bit of Commando, maybe. A little bit of Mercs. With the kind of theme from uh, Jailbreak. But implemented terribly and deservedly on this list. Because it is pretty, pretty bad. And uh, as featured in uh, Stuart Asson's terrible old games you've probably never heard of, actually. As an article written by uh, Larry Bundy Jr. So that's how infamous this game is. Let's see what uh, my uh, Amstrad CPC commentators think about LA SWAT. Um, this was a budget release and um, legend, legendarily terrible. Look at the scrolling here. 
Uh, I don't think we even get a title screen or a loading screen. I think the game just like random, just starts straight away. It's kind of a, like a cross between Commando and Jailbreak. Oh, and I've been beaten to death in a bloody pulped mess on the floor. I can't can't seem to go diagonally left. Why did he die? I wasn't shooting. I can't seem to go diagonally up and left for some weird reason. I can go diagonally up and right. I don't know if this is an emulator thing, but this is just truly dreadful game. Oh look, there's a granny here. I think, let's see if we can shoot the granny. Oh, we shot the granny and the game has crashed. I think that happens every time actually. Because my first encounter of this game ever was actually, I think, it just crashed within minutes of playing uh, and I've I managed to replicate it there. That is truly, truly dreadful. Um, controls are awful. The shooting dynamics, uh, I mean, I'm trying to go diagonally to shoot. Oh, it's moving. It's moving a bit. Has it completely crashed? No. But like, obviously no playtesting has been done here. Um, or if they did, they couldn't be asked or had enough time to fix like standard bugs like that. Um, just, just utter, utter trash. Taste issues aside, because basically LA is a city quite infamous for rioting and you're going around in this game shooting rioters in effect, LA SWAT is a perfectly terrible game. It's no good on any system, I've played them all. When you shoot people, their heads swell up for some reason. They don't fall down, their heads swell up. No idea why. The gameplay is repetitive, boring. It's been done so much better elsewhere. This could be like Akari Warriors, and it's not. It's not even Commando on the Amstrad. I mean, it's perfectly abysmal. The levels are short. The gameplay repetitive and boring, and it's just tasteless budget trash. Not just on the Amstrad, but on every single system it was released on. Out of the eight Roland games on the CPC, Roland on the Run is probably the worst by probably a country mile. Um, it's programmed by the same guys that brought us Bridget. Look for that later on in this list. Oh yes. And uh, it's essentially a Frogger clone that is just dire. Dire in every sense of the word. It, it, a lot of the time it doesn't even make sense. Um, it's a bit tricky one to sort of pin down this. And how they just attach Roland's name to it. Amsoft just want to chuck it out the door, I guess, by putting a bit of Roland action onto it. It's got nothing to do with Roland at all. I mean, the sprites on it are basically the same sprites as the one that you've seen in um, Bridget before. And so you're in this train. And you've got three, the flashing one you can only move. So the, 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 the flashing character is the only one you can move. And you have three keys to make them move. You can jump into the first truck, and then when they flash from the next line, then you can move into the next row of traffic and then into one of the hideouts below. So essentially Frogger rules going from up to down. Why on earth you would need to speed up the train and slow down the train, I am still not sure. I'm assuming to speed the game up a bit. But as you can see, lives deplete bloody quickly. You've got to have the timing of an absolute precision magician. I'm just going to go fast there just for a hell of it. To get the characters bang on. Stop. There we go. Stop it for no reason. I don't know why I'm stopping it. Epic, it says in the background there, flashing from Epic Soft. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's not epic. But as you can see, it's, it's bold, blocky, crude graphics. Very reminiscent of Bridget. I, I don't see what there is to play with this game. There's, there's, there's hardly anything to actually do with it. And there's no it's, there's no reward in this game at all. It's very difficult to actually get anywhere in it. Might be able to score a point. Might be able to get one character down at the bottom at some point. Who knows? But no, Roland on the run, it's 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 terrible. Absolutely abysmal. And uh, to be honest, I, I would have loved to have put this higher up on the list. It's that bad. But uh, the polls... Uh, I, that I took said that this this could have been given a little bit of an easy touch, but it still comes in firmly at number eight. So let's see what a few of my friends think about this one. Roland on the Run is by the same people who gave us the absolutely abysmal Bridget, and yet he uses the same graphical style, which I quite like, but it's even more incomprehensible. You have to jump from the train into the trucks to the other side of the road, but you press the keys, nothing happens, and then stickmen appear in the trucks. 
and you lo you're losing lives all the time and you've got absolutely no idea of what's going on it's completely incomprehensible rubbish and the graphics aside it's essentially a typing game Novabog, why are you doing this to us did we wrong you in a past life why are you making us play Roland on the run which should actually be regarded as not a game it's not a game it's a violation of the geneva convention it's used in torture in order to get secrets out of terrorists it's not a game it's a tech demo for an epilepsy machine it's one of those things that you use to detect replicants in blade runner you put it in front of them and say do you like this game and if they say yes you know that they're not human it's not a game stop making us play things that are so horrible <laughs> what the hell what the hell was that noise? And I think that, I think that was an, an attempt at music there. Hmm. The graphics are extremely blocky, um, but the scrolling, uh, the frame rate is terrible. Okay, we're moving. Uh, okay, I think what we need to do is we've got flashing characters appearing on the train carriages. I think they need to jump between the traffic. And it's like a reverse game of Frogger. We're going down the screen rather than up the screen, basically. And we can control the speed of the train. Is there a time limit to this game? Oh, there's there's one flashing. Ah, oh, and he died. Let's see if we can actually get someone to the hideout. So we'll wait until wait and see until that bottom one starts flashing. If we can. Oh god, guys, this is just terrible. On the bottom there. Oh, oh. Ah, oh, we scored one. There we go. So basically you've got to get them into these things here one thing I do remember about this game is that um, this was actually this game was actually using some promotional material on the release of the Amstrad CPC 464 um, for some reason they thought this the, the graphics on this looked good you have lost plus Y for another game do you know what guys no thank you uh, I think I will reset rather than play that again. Number seven in our list is Double Dragon 3, the Rosetta Stone. Oh my word, what a doozy this is. Now the Amstrad has a very interesting history with the Double Dragon series. There was two versions of the first game, for instance, one dreadful, one pretty good. The second game, again, pretty good. But the third game falls back to that first version by Melbourne House of Double Dragon 1. It's shite, basically. Um, again, falling foul to the usual things of being too slow and too monotonous and too dull and too specky port. Yes, indeed. The victim of the specky port strikes again. So we are contended here with Billy and Jimmy going out to get a stone for some reason uh, to resurrect Marion. I think that's the plot of this one. Traveling different uh, countries of the world, fighting the gangs as usual. But yeah, it's just, again, the, the gameplay is lost in the ether of the slowness and the sluggishness and the bad frame rate and the poor animation and... I suppose the sound effects aren't as bad as they could have been, but they're pretty monotonous. No music, of course. The whole thing just looks drab. It's got some nice detailed backgrounds, I'll give it that. Um, scrolling is poor as well. And it's just a slog to get through and you just lose interest within the first two seconds. It's pretty bad. Uh, brought to us by um, Storm Software back in 1991. And amazingly, um, Amstrad 100% in France gave this over 80% in a rating. Incredible. Um, CPC reviews, on the other hand, give this a rather deserved 3 out of 10. And that's being generous. It's abysmal. Let's see what my Amstrad buddies have to say about it. So, Double Dragon 3, the Rosetta Stone, where these two guys who know nothing except fighting go after a piece of uh, ancient stonework that tells you how to translate ancient texts. Why? 
And who knows? Maybe it just sounded good for the title. I don't know. What I can tell you is that sequels are supposed to get better than the previous ones. Maybe there's a bit of refinement in the, the way the game functions. Maybe they've got better graphics. Maybe it's just a better refined plot. Not in the case of Double Dragon. It starts off bad and it goes progressively worse. However, what I will say is, at least you can play this game. It's slow, yes. The graphics look terrible, yes. It's a specky port, yes. But at least it's playable. As opposed to some of the other ones I've been having a look at, where there is no game. It's just a screen. It's not exactly Way of the Exploding Fist. I like that game. That's a good fighting game. This is not a good fighting game. This is, well... Take a look for yourself. It's a bit crap. But at least there is a game here. And that's something. So, it, it's not the worst I've ever played. It's enjoyable, providing you're willing to sit there and just accept that it's slow as hell. Because they haven't refined a single piece of code from the Spectrum version. It's basically just the CPC emulating a Spectrum as it goes. Which isn't great. But the, at least there's a game there. Double Dragon 3. Um... Well, I've played the other ones, played the specky ones, and, um, well, at first glance, it looks, uh, it looks like a specky port. Yeah, fair enough, but it's got some tweaks. Um, well, let's face it, the sprites look great, the background's fine, monochrome, specky port, but nice detailed, no colour clash, I put a little bit of evidence into it, but, um, yeah, input lag doesn't help, doesn't help at all, particularly in the later levels when you've got the bikes coming at you. Um, and to, well, the sprites, you've got half a dozen, if that, different sprites. You've got, look, well, Frank side bottom, and, um, well, a bold guy, half the time. Um, it's very unimaginative. It's slow. Um, can't, key combinations are tricky to pull off. Jumping kicks, extremely difficult to pull off, I found, particularly with the keyboard. It's, um, yeah, it's very poor, really. Scrolling, mm, again, it's very minimal. Very, very minimal boundaries. It's not like um, it's a flip screen, which would have been infinitely better for it. Um, which lets the game down quite a bit. If you like to live your life to the constant sound of a game show style countdown timer, then Double Dragon 3, the Rosetta Stone, is the game for you. Because you only get 30 in-game seconds in the shops. I figure there must be security guards waiting just off screen in case you stand and read the Kung Fu magazines for too long. Outside the shops, you walk at exactly the same speed as your enemies, so you can just take a leisurely stroll along the street while they follow you endlessly, never getting any closer, never getting any farther away. Sound effects are various farts and pumps, but apart from that, the characters are totally mute. Hmm. Must have had the words jump kicked right out of them. As for graphics, the character portraits look like raggy dolls, but the graffiti is fun to read while you spin kick dudes in the face. Due to the enemies having the same colour sprites as your character, you really have to concentrate on who you are and which direction you're kicking. Anyway, once you've finally jump-kicked enough people to death, you can move on to the next area. Next up is level two, and a bunch of fat businessmen that try and palm you in the face. You can almost hear Arnold shouting, Talk to the hand! And, like the Terminator, they take for flippin' ever to kill, even with the nunchucks. In level 3, you fight Eskimos in their igloos. Possibly... I don't know. Don't tell anybody, but I didn't get that far. The whole thing is just a drudge. 
There's too much walking around and looking at scenery, and there are long periods where you do nothing but kick repeatedly for a full 40 seconds. Ugh. I'm going back to street gangs on the Nez. Yet another Mastertronic game on this list. Oh yes, Mad Games certainly is mad. Based off the Commodore 64 version. I hope that was better. Anyway, um, Finus Five Aside Soccer. Hmm, 1986. This is cringe, pretty much. Um, kind of a match day wannabe that isn't match day. It's decidedly worse, and I never thought much of match day. To be fair, um, that's not going to make me very popular saying that, but tough. Yeah, this is probably the, one of the easiest football games you'll ever play on the Amstrad, if you can call it a football game. It's more like uh, kick the egg around the pitch with no ball physics at all, and just walk it into the goal. Uh, it's barely any opposition in this game. So we're just going to type in shite, because that's what the game is, and let's go! It's a one-match affair, there's... Uh, Nothing to change, you can't change the halves, you can't change the times, there's no tournament, there's no leagues, there's nothing. It's just one game, one shot deal, three screens, with a bit of slide scrolling there. And there we go, I've already scored. Just roll it into the goal. Kick, 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 goal. That's it. At least it has sound effects, um, for want of a better word. Some bops and bips for when you're kicking the ball. And uh, there we go, look, once again, I'm just going to walk this into the goal. Oh, missed it. So if you haven't picked it up, I'm the guy in the green shirt. You can't change player, you are a one outfield player only. I'm gonna just walk this in. There we go, just walked it in. No one gives a shit. The other, the other team are just a load of zombies. They've all got white hair. It's uh, two teams of albinos, it seems. <laughs> They've all got bright blonde hair, what's going on? Bright white hair. All the silver foxes out playing a bit of five aside with some clown faces staring at you in the background. That's disturbing. Yeah, very basic. Uh, massive sprite clash here as well going on. It's pretty tiny sprites, but you know, it moves okay, I guess. Uh, uh, well, there's not much really much to say about it. It's just so simple and basic and there's, it presents no challenge whatsoever. You can just walk these, the ball into the goal at, at will. Occasionally, when the team gets the ball down your end, your end, you can take control of the goalkeeper. That's it. Uh, just to kick the ball out. I'm just going to walk, here you go, just walk that in. And there's another goal, so I'm 3-0 up already. Very simple, very crap, very boring, no longevity at all, no finesse. Nice little uh, title screen music, I guess, in the menu at the beginning. But that's really it. That's all its merits. What colour has the goalkeeper gone there? He's got a sort of purple maroon colour and he's just standing in a purple goal. Yes. Of course, no line outs at all because this is five aside. So, you know, it does have some rules. Terrible. Absolutely awful. Let's see what my Amstrad fraternity make of this one. Five Aside Soccer was the first 2.99 game I ever bought for my CPC. The first, I think it went in the order of I, the first budget games I bought were The Apprentice, then Molecule Man, which were both 1.99, and then I decided right on these 2.99 games because they're going to be even better. Although to be fair, Molecule Man was actually quite rubbish. So I got Five Aside Soccer, the exciting packaging from Mad Games, loaded it up. Seems to remember it took forever because there was no speed loaders in those days and what i presented and what i was presented with was an absolute mess barely playable it's a terrible football game it's really you know it's a toss-up between this between this and world cup carnival as to which is the worst football game on the cpc it's worse than kickoff i'm not a fan of kickoff on any of the formats and it's terrible on the amstrad this is worse and what makes this really bad is this was my first 299 game and I was really looking forward to seeing what 299 games had to offer but what I got was a massive disappointment that got played three or four times and then got put to the back of the drawer I kept my games in absolutely terrible and a game that even when you mention it today makes me feel cheated a uh, pretty crap loading screen, but at least they bothered with it. Out of version by Stephen Curtis. Hang your head in shame, Stephen. Um, oh, we actually got some very nice music on this title screen from uh, 
Rob Hubbard, no less. Oh, right, okay, I can't. The backspace doesn't work, so I can't go back and correct that. I wanted to put a capital X, but never mind. That's not a good start. And oh dear. Okay, alright, it looks like I'm controlling the guy in the green t shirt. And I can't switch to any other player. It won't let me. So you're you're only in control of one outfield player by the look of it. Oh, look at the graphics there. The sprites colliding with each other. Oh, you can control the goalkeeper. And they've scored. Um, the crowd at the top there looked terrible. Um, this is some of the worst graphics I've seen on a football game. Um, I will say, I don't think this is the worst football game I've ever played on the Amstrad. Um, personally, can we actually kick it off? No, we can't. Personally, I think Am's Soccer is probably the worst uh, CPC football game. Um, I did do an A to Z of football games on my channel many, many, many moons ago. Um, and I seem to remember... Uh, Am soccer being a bit worse than this. Uh, I think even Glenn Hoddle's soccer was probably worse as well. Um, it is vaguely playable. Vaguely playable. Where's my keep? We've got no goalkeeper. There's ugh, the goalkeeper is at the bottom of the pitch there. Utterly dreadful. Utterly dreadful. So surprisingly low on this list at number five is the Amsoft infamous tyranny to gaming that is Bridget. What can be said about this abomination to gaming? I can see what they were trying to do here. A puzzle game. Uh, you combine the two, the, the, the two, should I say, four bridges in, you know, timing it up with the people that are crossing the bridges. I get the idea. I can actually have a bit of fun with this game because I had this years ago. I had it. I think it might be the first game I ever loaded up for my Amstrad, and I can have a bit of fun with it. But um, when you strip away that, the initial reaction it's just abysmal. Um, the graphics are absolutely. They're basically coded, literally. I'm sure they are. Brought to us by um, Epic Soft. They they made some great ones for Amstrad. Epic Soft did. Uh, they always look the same as well. I mean, all the all, all the sprites, if I could say this word, sprites, all look the same. And these tiny little stick men with very blocky faces that didn't really do much, and they move around like in 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 like do, 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 in in, seg in segments. When they don't actually walk, they sort of slide in flickers. It's like you you know you you look you're playing this game through one of those sort of drums where you have this image inside and you spin the drum and that's how you're looking at this game that's the way it's animated it's absolutely terrible and you know, the responsiveness is hit and miss it's so hit and miss you're supposed to be able to sort of like put three of the bridges down at one point but sometimes they'll pop up when they shouldn't have and they won't respond they won't go down when you want them to and then we come to the soundtrack which is the pièce de résistance of shitness when it comes to Bridget. Take the colonial bogey march, remix it with jingle bells, and you get this abomination to the ears in such a grating tone that is, it's unbelievable that someone could even have considered to compose this. It's insane. You add that to a game which is already really bad in the first place, graphically, visually ugly, responsiveness terrible it's 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 a recipe of an absolute disaster it came free with the Amsoft 12 pack and um, well ratings don't really bear it any good um, <laughs> CPC reviews gave it 0 out of 10 yes 0 out of 10 what a high score Amstrad Action I believe gave it 20% it's a terrible infamously bad game but it's one of those games it's a bit like Marmite some Amstrad fans absolutely love this thing because of how crap it is and some just hate it because of how crap it is but let's see how crap my Amstrad friends think it is Bridget came free with the Amstrad CPC 464 for a long time in the hundred pound Amstrad software pack along with games like Galactic Plague Oh Mummy and Harrier Attack. 
and it's a single screen game we have to drop the drawbridges for your men to run across and get all the way down it's programmed by an egyptian software house whose only other credit i can think of off the top of my head was roland on the run which seems to employ many of the same traits this game suffers from it's a really boring single screen game with no real progression all you have to do is get the men from the beginning through to the end the graphics actually aren't bad they you know there's there's a certain charm to them but ultimately the game is incredibly fiddly incredibly frustrating not a lot of fun Bridget is copyright Egypt so it is the intellectual property of a whole nation haha <laughs> fooled ya it's just the developer's pseudonym disappointingly there is no title screen but that's okay, because great games don't need fancy graphics to win you over. Technically, this is a Christmas game, because the music is 50% Jingle Bells. But if it is a Christmas game, then it's also a World War II game, because the soundtrack is also 50% Colonel Bogey. Thankfully, the music is by far the worst part of the game, and you can switch it off with the press of a button. The graphics aren't abysmal, as the isometric drawing here is accomplished enough such that you can tell this is supposed to be a bridge connecting two houses down on the docks. It's actually rather picturesque, if you're playing on a colour monitor, at least. Thankfully, you can choose up to 50 lives, so you can acclimatise yourself to the gameplay mechanics. It all seems rather simple. Guide the men over the walkway from one house to the other, closing the bridges at the correct time by pressing the correct buttons. But it is rather tricky. Guiding one man across the bridge is an accomplishment in itself. You'll find yourself messing around on level 1 for a while, but at some point you just get that urge to challenge yourself and crank the difficulty right up to 9. On the hardest difficulty, slowdown can be a real problem. Although I will admit, the slowed down music does become more bearable. At this difficulty, it's inevitable that you'll have to sacrifice some men, which just walk off the bridge to their death like lemmings. Got that, kids? You're responsible for these guys' deaths. And these are real men we're talking about, not just robots pretending to be men. You're a murderer, you know. I don't mind simplistic games, but Bridget is just frustrating. For a similarly taxing but more rewarding game, see Amsoft's Traffic which by rights should have been the game given away free with the Amstrad instead of Bridget. Yes, this was a free piece of software. And yes, it seems to function without bugs. But no, I still wouldn't recommend playing it. I would, however, recommend downloading the theme tune for your MP3 player. Yeah, so Bridget, um, I think it was the first game uh, I actually ever played, literally my first ever video game. Um, uh, and because of that, it's actually the game that's uh, been the longest time since I've played it, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I have very fond memories of Bridget, and you know when you know it's been so long um, since you've played the game, when you, uh, when you finally go back, it's just so much worse than you remember. It happened with so many things on the NES. I remember my, one of my cousins had turtles, and I remember that, that looking like the arcade version in my head, but you know, whatever. With Bridget, I, I, I thought that was 3D, with, the, with the, you know, the path that's going down towards the screen. That just blew my mind with the, um, the, that sort of isometric look about it. Um, and I remember uh, uh, going back at it and looking at it now, I'm like, Nova Bug, what have you done? That game sucks. <laughs> Um, I generally thought the first game I ever played was uh, was not a bad one actually, you know, a bit simple, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, really bad game. Okay, the thing with Bridget is, it's from 1984, it's a point where we really didn't know what a game was and how to make games properly. That came later because of games like this. It's got an interesting premise, you've got people coming from the top, going to the bottom, and you've got to get them across bridges. And to be honest with you, it's not that bad. Sure. 
Looking at some of the other launch titles for the Amstrad CPC, it's not the best one, but it's by far not the worst. Because I think we all know that that's that one with uh, Roland and the trains. Because what on earth were they thinking? But this, I don't know. I, I know people say it's bad, but I had fun with it. It's, it's not, it's not the best game ever, but it's far from the worst. There's a bit of skill to it. The music's awful, I'll give you that, it, it seems to be a medley of just total crap, but the game itself, it's not bad. So I really don't know why people are, are saying it's terrible, because I've played an awful lot worse and we call it Count Ducky the Two. <laughs> I can't even finish that set. Count Ducky the Two isn't even a game. <laughs> So fittingly off the back of Zoe's harsh but true criticism is the aforementioned Count Duckula 2 at number 4. Some might think it's too low on this list but um, <laughs> there's a reason I put it at number 4 because uh, you should see what's at number 3, 2 and 1. Anyway, this is abysmal. Is the best word I can just use to describe it. Absolutely abysmal. And it makes it doubly difficult to swallow that this was released in 1992 the last year of the Amstrad it's absolutely diabolical and um, as you can see look at this absolute shockingly shower of jumbled rubbish the first Count Duckula was an average game but it was at least playable and um, you know, it was fairly entertaining it had a good theme intro a bit like this one does this has a good theme intro too i'll give it that but um that's where it stops because the whole th oh, here we go and this is what well, that's one of the major problems here we'll get to that in a minute uh one of the major problems here is um not being able to jump through the roof for starters um this is a, just it's a specky port and it's a terrible terrible specky port because everything has slowed down everything is just t torn apart everything is glitchy it's terribly drawn terribly animated runs so slowly i've seen snails race tortoises faster in treacle it's awful it's i was going to shoot it with the see that didn't even respond the response another absolute awful i was going to use the ketchup gun that didn't work yes i'm supposed to be having a ketchup gun Mr. Duckula himself. Um, so it's go, you go by screen by screen by screen. It's a complete departure from the first game, which was much better than this. Let's see if I can get through this without falling with these stupid platforms that just disappear. Um, I get their appearing platforms, I get that. But when, you, when you're supposed to move on... Oh, screwed that jump up. When you're supposed to move on them and they disappear under your feet, you just fall. You, you 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 can't do anything about it. You're supposed to sort of drop to the next platform that would have appeared, but it doesn't appear in time, so you slip through it. As you can see, the Duckula sprite is just tearing and splitting all the time. The sound is minimal at best. I've just gone through the edge of the platform there. I don't even know. You're supposed to collect a number of items to do something. I don't know. I can't get that far in it. I'm actually going thinking of putting a challenge on myself to get through it um, just out of a bit of fun and this is the reason why I've actually put it at number four because as much as this game is absolutely terrible in every way oh look I've gone through the roof there how have I done that that shouldn't have happened I've jumped backwards if you call that jumping jerky frame rate as you can see oh, I'll hit the roof again and there I go full so the only way I cleared the second uh, stage there by the way was by calling tremendous Terence which you can only do like several times in the entire game I believe uh, because you just can't get you can't get past the levels because you get stuck in the ceiling, you headbutt the ceiling, and you just fall to your doom. It's just terrible in every way. Um, the best thing to do is to say play it, and then regret you ever played it. But it's good for that title sequence anyway. Um, let's see what my compadres think of this absolutely abomination of a game, Cantacular Two. Right. Um. Well. Count Duckula, um, I think this is probably well known for being a, a terrible game. Um, well, again, music, pretty good, pretty good to be fair. Nice little rendition, bit basic I suppose are the main um, main titles. Um, did have a lot going for it I suppose, um, up until um, well, you start playing. Um, yeah, waggy controls, speckable, 
the usual suspects. Um, could have been better. Um, but I think the worst bit of it is, um, well, the flicking. Um, platforms don't move, they appear and disappear, leaving you to die quite often. Um, and, uh, well, and then there's the big problem of jumping. Um, not so much the actual jumping itself, but the fact that you hit the roof and uh, you can't really get much further. Um, quite well documented, sorry to bit of a plug here, for uh, well, Stuart Ashen's terrible old games you've probably never heard of. Yeah, Camp Decula 2, specifically the Amstrad CPC version released in 1992. Uh, great alternative software. Princely slum of £3.99 according to uh, this piece of work. So, uh, yeah. Jumping is extremely difficult. Can't see what's hurting you. Bad collision detection. I don't know what's going on. I'm moving around and I'm jumping. Um, yeah. Pretty terrible game. I couldn't get on with it. And in fact, I think it was classed as just being buggy and unplayable because of one section you couldn't actually get past it due to the fact that you hit the roof when you try and jump. Um, yeah, it's not good. Not good at all. I don't have an awful lot to say about Count Dukula 2, as it's all a bit bland and generic. The graphics resemble those from a Tiger handheld, which I suppose gives the game some character. The wrong character, but character is better than no character, <laughs> in any instance. I would say it's slow, but having played Altered Beast Amstrad CPC, that would be a thoroughly unfair criticism. I don't think you should tape over Manic Miner with the code for Count Ducula 2, however. Here's something you can try at home. At some point, usually about three minutes in, you just want to go and watch the cartoon. In which case, mission accomplished. I wonder where I could buy the series on DVD. The first Count Dracula game was a slightly below average platformer game that saw you running around with some rather dull graphics on the Amstrad, although, as I seem to remember, slightly nicer animation. So you would have thought they would have gone for something similar, perhaps reusing the game engine for a second game, but no alternative of producing an entirely new game. Ported over from the Spectrum, evidently because the Spectrum version seems to run much faster, it's an absolutely abysmal game where sprites jerk along and the controls don't seem to respond too well. The game's instructions seem to imply it's aimed at kids. Well, frankly, if I'd been of six or seven years old, I would have felt pretty patronised by this rubbish. It's the kind of game, that if it had come out in 1984, you would have gone... Mm, yeah, okay, you know, there's a there's quite a few rubbish games around. But this came out in 1992, and really, there's absolutely no excuse. So now we're getting into the realms of games that are basically almost unplayable. And here is the number three entry on my list, Airwolf. And... I think it is pretty much unplayable. This game has the potential to have so much going for it based off a very classic 80s TV show that most kids loved in the day. Super powered air helicopter and all that stuff. But what we get given is um, flying a helicopter in a cave. That's not a great start or, or a good idea. And we have got to destroy a few uh, ammo boxes and collect a few hostages. But can you get anywhere in this game? No, uh, because it's so ridiculously hard. So the, the physics on it are so absolutely unforgiving. You're always dropping. The moment you touch anything even slightly, you're generally dead. Uh, everything is so confined. Everything is so tight. The controls are lackluster at the best for something that is absolutely supposed to be so precise. It's just a nightmare to play. So difficult that it just kills the game. It's utterly game breaking. This came out in 1985, released by Amsoft, unbelievably enough. And whilst it does a good rendition of the Airwolf theme, it's just... 
within within five minutes less than that probably you just tear your hair out because you just can't can't get anywhere i can probably get to the sixth screen best without any cheats and here's the funny thing if you do actually use cheats it still doesn't make it that much easier <laughs> it's it's just unbelievable the graphics are nothing special they're clean they're fine, they're nothing, they're not really ugly, but they're nothing special. The music is generally okay, this, the effects are lackluster, but the gameplay just utterly, utterly murders this game and makes it basically one of the top contenders of worst game because it's just so hard, so badly planned out, really terrible to play, it just makes you want to dig your eyes out in frustration and also there's a very interesting game bug with it sometimes the bricks in the surroundings will be green and sometimes they will be orange and um, yeah can't explain that one either let's see if any of my Amstrad friends can explain that the thing about 1980s TV shows is most of them have pretty abysmal ports to the home computers and Airwolf is no exception you'd think with such an exciting dynamic TV show there'll be lots of options to produce an exciting computer game but no on all the home computers not just the amstrad it's absolutely abysmal they all seem to feature airwolf flying around in a cave i mean who puts a helicopter in a cave the one place you don't want a helicopter is in a cave and it is actually as bad as you think it's going to be and the really telling thing is is if you play airwolf with a, a cheat so you take on less damage it's still impossible Although the screenshots looked impressive in the 1985-1986 Amsoft catalogues, it is, I'm afraid, a pretty rotten and really difficult game. Airwolf is a very short game, but that's okay, because this is compensated for by extreme difficulty and Olympic level precision. It's the title you pick up once, play for five minutes, then immediately go back to Roland in the Caves. Actually, after playing this, I think I fancy a bit of Bridget. Oh god, please give me Bridget again! I will, however, praise the highly realistic chopper controls. But only because I imagine that's what it's like to control a real-life helicopter with an Amstrad CPC joystick. I.e the most difficult thing ever. Also, the controls are quite responsive. Perhaps a little bit too responsive. But there is no lag, which is an absolute joy. Airwolf's main downfall is that it's so unforgiving, and it's far too easy to die. Guiding this chopper requires extreme concentration and motor skills. But, above all, it doesn't offer any sort of reward for your efforts. The most fun part of the game is trying to shoot out every little tiny bit of the breakable walls, and I think I'd rather do that than try to advance to the next screen. Apparently, with Airwolf, Amsoft proudly presented, they were proud of this thing. How? How can you be proud of that? It's a game where the moment you start, you die if you're not pressing up on the joystick because that's fair. Oh my goodness, this is bad to the point where everything else just seems to look good. It's the standard through which we assess everything else. I can think of one game that is worse than this, and that's Count Dukula 2, and that's because Count Dukula 2 is not a game. Oh my, look at it! It's crap! How could anyone think? This thing was going to be okay. I can program better than that, and the most complex thing I've ever written was a teletext simulator. A thing that requires no moving images whatsoever. And I still could do better than that, because it's that bad. You know what? I can make a better copy of a game on the back of this envelope by drawing a helicopter in a pen. There. Can you see that? That helicopter? That picture of a helicopter right there? That's a better game than Airwolf. Just move it around, beep, 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 beep. That is a better game than Airwolf. So, on to my second choice for worst Amstrad CPC game. And it's not just worst Amstrad CPC game, it's worst game ever a contender. 
Pit Fighter was a game that I, I hated back in the arcades. I hated it on the Super Nintendo and I hated it on the Amstrad CPC for many, many different reasons. It's a game that lures you in with its glamour and its vision, visual prowess. I mean, this was the second game to ever use digitised sprites, for instance. But, in essence, when you get beyond the visuals and the aesthetics, it's gameplayless, it's empty, it's hollow, there's nothing to this. It's, and a bit like the Amstrad CB, CPC version, these lovely intro graphics, very nice. This music is really good. In fact, the music is the best thing of this. Because, just like Airwolf previously, it's got good music, it's got half decent graphics when it comes to the intros, but when you get into the game, it's utterly, utterly utterly appalling. It is just another unplayable mess and I can appreciate what they've tried to do here but you just don't, you can't do it. You cannot do it with the power of the Amstrad. You cannot do it. They've gone for the digitized look but it just moves at a pace that I can only describe as, as I've said before, a turtle running through treacle the, res the control lag is just, and the responsiveness is just absolutely, it's, it's not even there. I mean, so half the time you don't even know what you're doing. Half the time you push something, it doesn't work. Then you do a move, and you think, how the hell did I do that? I don't know. I'm getting hit now, at this point, in, in, in the game, and I don't know even now how I'm getting hit, because I can't even move. They've tried to do the scaling. I mean, <laughs> they've tried to do the scaling, and you think, oh, good effort, lads. But my god, it's a failure. It's such a big failure on every level. The music is the only thing that is the saving grace of this game, but the gameplay is just absolutely so bad that you, if you don't scrunch your joystick up in, in absolute horror and anger, ah, oh, I don't know. It's a, it, 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 but it works like every other Pitfire version I've ever played, even the arcade. I, I just cannot, cannot understand where the appeal of this game is outside of its visual look. Um, and it doesn't even have a visual look on the Amstrad, it's just absolutely, oh, I've got kicked in the back of the head there. And it's just terrible, um, awful in every way, control lag is massive, the, the digitized sprites are just really ugly. It's extremely easy as well, if you, if you can persevere with it, it's massively, massively easy as well. And um, yeah, it chugs along at this pace of the trotter's van going up a hill. <laughs> and then jumping moves. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, it's just terrible. The colour scheme is is terrible as well. Dreadful. And I think it was dreadful on nearly every platform it came out on. Um, Amstrad um, Action didn't review this, so I haven't even got a, a uh, score from them. But Amstrad 100% in France amazingly gave this a 43%. Mm, they gave it 90% for sound, so, you know, I think that most of the aggregate came from there, but the general consensus is it's pretty shit, and that's still too much of a high score for me. Uh, CPC Game Reviews gave it a 1 out of 10. That's about right. It is awful. 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 It's the pits, and uh, let's see if my Amstrad friends also think it's the utter turd pits. Apart from how they look on screen, is there any difference between these pit fighter fighters? Do these guys have any stats? Or do we just have to go on appearance? I guess so. Wow, I'm amazed. This was released many, many years before Mortal Kombat. Oh, Rotoscope truly is a marvel of modern technology. Ninja Hamster, eat your heart out. This is how it should be done. But those magnificent graphics come at a price. Pit Fighter contains more loading than a PS1 title. Ah, another game ahead of its time. This is another of those games where the title and fighter select screens take up a whole side of an Amstrad CPC disc. That's a lot of bytes. Yikes top tip. Turn this into a rhythm game by tapping buttons to the tune of anything playing on the radio. 
or in your head during the loading screens. This extends the lifespan of the game by at least 100%, i.e. 2 minutes. Visually, it's all stretched vertically, as if you're playing on some futuristic super widescreen TV that is yet to be invented. Do I have to say it again? Pit Fighter, you are well and truly ahead of your time! I like the scrolling on a 3D plane, but it does show off the fact there's a studio ceiling. Or at least, I think that's what the white bar at the top of the screen could be. Here's a Wurz Wally style challenge. See if you can spot the cameo of Andy Cap for extra Britishness points. Pit Fighter was a rather tasteless arcade game where you were, well, it's bare knuckle fighting in effect, I guess, that kind of thing in a warehouse. And there was little hope of this being properly ported to the 8 bit systems. And yeah, it looks ugly on the screenshots when you first saw it in the magazines with badly digitised graphics. And then when you come to play it, it's slow and it looks absolutely abysmal. It's one of those games where you think, either reimagine it for the 8 bits and just ditch digitised graphics and do something different, or forget it. And this is one of the games they should have forgotten. Now, I played the Pit Fighter arcade game back in the day, and it was a big deal at the time when it just came out because digitised graphics were a funky new technology for video games. We were all used to 2D pixel art type graphics, your Street Fighter kind of thing. And so this with like photographic realism or, or like video footage in a game, that was something new and impressive theoretically, even though the uh, the gameplay itself was pretty ropey to be honest. The, the, the digitised actors, I don't know if I want to call them that, and the way they scaled, you know, they moved in and out of the screen and got bigger and smaller, was, it was impressive. It made you look and think, wow, that's cool, whatever will they think of next? And next was um, Mortal Kombat, but that's another story. So uh, there were quite a few home versions, some better than others. All of them had ropey gameplay, to be honest, because the game itself was not great. It just looked interesting. CPC version. All right. Digitized graphics in two colors with major blocky resolution um, does not look good. I mean, the whole thing with digitized is it's meant to be that photorealistic. You can't do photorealistic in two colours. Sorry, you just can't. I've seen ZX81 games look more impressive. Um, the movement. Well, two frames per second if you're lucky. You've got to send a telegram to your player to tell him, look, that guy's going to punch you in the face. Maybe you should get out the whoops too late. He's down on the floor and that guy is going to chuck something big and pixelated at you but you can't quite work out what it is, maybe. Uh, it's bloody awful. Um, it is so slow, it is so laggy, it looks awful. It has one redeeming feature and that is the music. The music is really nice, it's impressive. If you could just listen to the music and throw the rest of the game away, that would be quite cool, you know, have it as a mod file something like that, load it, it uh, uh, they have mod players, all that sort of thing on the CPC, that was later on the Amiga, but anyway, yeah, good music, god awful game, plays badly, looks awful, terrible, um, totally worth checking out, please don't pay money for it, because it is one of those so bad it's awful rather than good kind of things, but something you should experience once in your life. Now, anyone not knowing anything about this version of OutRun on the Amstrad CPC might be fooled into thinking it's pretty decent. Look at this title screen. It's very pretty, very nice, very colourful. Looks great. Imagine if this was like this in-game. Would be excellent, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, US Gold and Probe Software managed to make an absolute mess of a game here. And uh, look, the writing's on the wall with these title screens here. Orange text in a very squashed, flat, strange font, almost reminiscent of Mode Zero default font, 
on a blue plain solid background which you can barely read that at the bottom there absolutely dreadful now the reason why this is number one it's not because it's got the worst graphics it's not even because it's got the worst sound even though the sound is barely there apart from that little jingle at the front at the beginning um, in fact the sound is an interesting story we'll get to that in a minute but uh, the gameplay basically destroys any ethos that Outrun had for you as a child. Back in 1986, when Sega released Outrun, it was a massive, massive hit. Speed, um, it was exciting, It was the, the soundtrack was amazing, and everyone loved to be driving around in your Ferrari Testarossa with a lovely blonde beside you, going around LA and wherever the hell you were going. Fantastic. But every nuance of that is utterly destroyed and burnt down in flames by this version on the CPC. So disappointment level at 10 here. This is the reason why it's the worst game on the Amstrad. It's not because it's got the worst graphics. I mean the graphics aren't great. They're not brilliant. That title screen is amazing. It's really good. But the in-game graphics are... well they seem to have the frame rate of about one per trillion million years. A green road, um, and that was good, wasn't it? Just stop into this sort of wobbling around thing that looks like a beetle. And then you get shoved to the side for some reason. That's weird. Oh, God. Um, the, 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 there's no speed to this. There's no speed. There's no excitement. The responsiveness is absolutely dreadful. You you press sideways and like two, two seconds later you move. And you can barely see what's going on. The distance in the cars, you can't gauge any distance. I mean, the, in the horizon, it's not even moving. Barely the road moves at all. The fact that it's all green is just absolutely terrible. It just makes the visuals really poor. There's no detail in the background. The vertical and horizontal scrolling are just absolutely abysmal. The epitome of terrible on the Amstrad. And this tinny screeching noise, is, is that's it. That's all you get for soundtrack. But saying that... You can actually play an audio tape while you're playing the game. They gave you an audio tape of the original arcade soundtrack while you play the game. So you create your own soundtrack. <laughs> but aside from all the terrible gameplay, the really shoddy, lazily done graphics, the non-existent sound, at least the HUD is quite pretty, I guess. It's the disappointment level. It's the fact that this is a port of a, a major important arcade that came out and within a year ported to the Amstrad just a, a pale, not even a shadow of itself. It's, it's not even, an, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a fragment of roasting ember left, a shell of, a, what was that? You see that? <laughs> it's just terrible. Um, for the reason alone, of the fact that it's so disappointing and revered as being absolutely terrible and all over the place, awfully programmed, lazily done, cloner cars everywhere, just deservedly number one as the worst Amstrad CPC game in my book. And a lot of the polls that I conducted suggested this too. So there you have it. It's just awful. Uh, play the original. It's uh, far, 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 far the, the game that you really want to play when you want to play Outrun. But that's enough of me blabbering. Let's go for a final time to my CPC friends and see what their take on this dreadful arcade port is. Outrun, the arcade sensation. The game that I played at South Sea Arcade at Clarence Pier back in the 80s along with Space Harrier. And you saw the screenshots in the magazines. You saw, the, saw them and thought, wow, the, we're getting full colour graphics here. The, you've got the red Ferrari. This is going to be amazing. And then you load up the loading screen and you get the Outrun music. And you, you think, oh, this is going to be so good. And then you start the game. No music. The road goes from grey in the loading screen to green for no reason. There is no reason the road needs to be green. The Amstrad has enough colours to do this, yet they've not made it grey. No, it's green. No excuse. No excuse at all. The game runs absolutely abysmally. It, even if you play it on an emulator, which I don't, but if you do and you speed it up, it's still rubbish. Yet the graphics, someone's done a nice job on the graphics. Someone's ported the music over for the loading screen, and that looks brilliant. It, the actual game it's so bad 
There's no 1 to 8K version. Perhaps if they'd done a 1 to 8K version, they could have put the music in and made it a little bit better. But no, it's absolute rubbish. And the only consolation, the only consolation from this is all the 8-bit versions are rubbish. And goodness me, if you've seen the MSX version, that really is a whole league of rubbish below what the CPC version is. Yikes top tip. Get the disc version of Outrun if you value your free time and our sanity. The loading time still isn't great, however. Look at that! I just drove straight through a house. I wonder if I demolished it. Oh well, we'll never know because there is no turning back. Visually, there is no distinction between the road and off-road, and I love how the road is green, as if you're driving through swamplands. <laughs> Into artistic license, great. But my biggest gripe with Outrun is that it just doesn't feel fun. It's just driving around at two miles an hour and avoiding slow-moving traffic. And I can go out and do that in real life. You just don't get that feeling of speed, and I think that's what Outrun is supposed to be about, isn't it? You Outrun. So, okay, we've got a really, really nice loading screen there. And um, we've got the uh, famous Outrun music as well playing there, which actually sounds pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's a really, really nice loading screen, but, but guys, um, this is deceiving. Because when we actually get to the game itself, the graphics are nothing like this, and it's typical, uh, Typical US Gold doing a cheap uh, and quick conversion. And here is the actual title screen and it looks dreadful. What the hell is that font there? Uh, it's got orange, brown with a white white shadow underneath at the, at the end. That is a terrible font, it's not a good start already. Who thinks that looks good, honestly? Off we go. And... Apparently we're going 160 odd kilometers per hour. It doesn't uh, per mile, sorry, and it does not feel like. It. <laughs> oh, there's our first sound effect in the game. A, bit, a horrible screeching noise for Ben's, and this is just utterly dreadful. What happened to the nice graphics we saw on the loading screen? I mean, hang on a second, right, right. Just going to pause out there a second. I wonder if you can see that. But what, you've got these random white lines appearing there. What the hell are these road markings? I mean, look at head. It, the, the road's bending to the left, but we've got bits of pixels going in a circular to the right, bit to the left there. One's going to the right, that one's going to the left. And there, there's the left bend. Um, what, what the hell? Right, let's move, let's carry on. We've just crashed. It sort of controls okay. There's no sense of speed, no sense of like sort of road physics or anything like that. Sprites lurching across the screen, appearing and disappearing. Uh, did I crash there? Did I hit anything? The collision detection is awful. Now whilst there are worse driving games on the Amstrad, when you put things into context, the, the whole hype and uh, expectation surrounding it, there's no question this should be in like the top 10 worst ever games on the Amstrad because this is appalling um, given it's such a high profile release and uh, US Gold uh, obviously rushed it. They farmed it out to Probe um, software who themselves, norm Probe are normally really really good actually on the Amstrad, Probe themselves then farmed it out further to I think ICE um, a Glaswegian programming house. I don't think they were called that at the time but basically the, the program was Ian Morrison and he did appalling driving games throughout his career on the Amstrad, like Cisco Heat, um, Turbo Outrun, which is slightly improved, um, Hydra, God, uh, he did Chase HQ2, the leg legendary missing uh, GX4000 car, and, um, but you can see what the Spectrum version uh, looks and plays like to see what that would be like, and that is appalling as well. Um, uh, I have no idea how Mr. Morrison ended up with so many um, conversions of driving games uh, throughout the 80s for such high profile games and companies, but there you go.